Recently, I've been feeling weirdly sentimental. I don't know if it's because some universal shift is happening or because my views are slipping beyond belief. But I've been going back and watching old videos and I've realized next month will be eight years since I started recipe testing here on YouTube. So I figured it's time for a check-in. I don't know how it's taken me this long to get back to some of these recipes, but I wanted to see if they withstood the test of time, maybe make some upgrades and enhancements along the way. This should be very fun. We're gonna take a full-on stroll down memory lane. And let's get right into this one. I asked you guys over on my Instagram, which recipes come to mind first when you think of my all-time classic recipes? And by far, the most requested one, the reason so many of you are here today, is the iconic BuzzFeed pizza dip. I grabbed some whole milk and cream cheese, mozzarella cheese and crushed tomatoes, fresh basil and fresh parm, some sharp white cheddar, and some pepperoni. I guess we're officially at that point where we rely on nostalgia for content. Um, cue Star Wars or Marvel, if they ever bring back Tony or Steve. But I was really excited for this one regardless, even though some of these recipes were way before my battle with cream cheese ever even started. If you are newer and you don't already know, the short version of this story is that back in the day, all the big food channels like BuzzFeed, Tastemade, they all used so much damn cream cheese in their food, no matter if it was a dessert, a pasta, any kind of appetizer. I just felt like I was having to purchase and then consume blocks upon blocks of it and eventually got tired of the damn stuff. Also some backstory with this recipe, whenever I reminisce on my YouTube career or somebody asks me when the career even started, I always point back to this video. I had less than a thousand subscribers at the time. I want to say 980 something and this is the first video of mine that ever popped off, got a few thousand views. I remember sitting in class freaking out as it was happening and having to run down the hallway to the bathroom every two minutes to check the number of views. And it's been an incredible ride since then. I would not change a single thing. For the Pizza Dip 2.0, I first chopped up the pepperoni into cubes. I know the circles look much more pizza-like, but the cubes are a little more practical for a dip. I'm introducing the white cheddar and the fresh basil. I think that's gonna do wonders for the flavor, for color, and to mask the cream cheese a little bit more. And I left it in the oven for a few more minutes just to get really nice and bubbly. Suddenly we've teleported back to 2015. So let's give this one a taste. I kind of don't want to admit how happy I am to be seeing this thing again. It's filling me with so many good memories. It's such a classic. <laughs> I've said this many times, I will say it again. At its core, I don't hate cream cheese. I hate when it's used in an overabundance in places where it doesn't belong, and that's all you taste. This, however, is fantastic. The main flavors are those strong cheeses, the cheddar and parm. Obviously, you get the fresh herbs, that oily pepperoni. It's not like this is 70% cream cheese, and that's all you taste, unlike most of the stuff BuzzFeed used to make. It's kind of ironic I'm using a twisted oven mitt. Uh, those were two big competitors way back when. But this thing still gets my stamp of approval. Uh, if you want to give it a crack, I still recommend it very highly. Whether it's this 2.0 version or even the original one, but let's keep it moving. For the next equally iconic, but maybe lesser known retry today is Tasty's Taco Pie. And for its 2.0 version, I grabbed some flour and paprika, garlic and onion powder, butter, ground beef, salsa and sour cream, a yellow onion, dried oregano, chili powder, cumin, some crushed red pepper flakes and American cheese, some water, cotija cheese, salt and pepper, Monterey Jack, lettuce and fresh cilantro. This one's next on the docket for a couple of reasons. Mainly, I just wanted an entree from around the same time. This one was posted in March of 2016. And I remember it being really good, really simple. I made it a couple times afterwards for dinner for my family and it's pushing a half million views itself. So it more than qualified for a video like this in my book. The main tweaks with this one start with the ground beef mixture. I'm starting with plenty of browned off onions and garlic. I'm whipping up a homemade taco seasoning, which I have been saying for years is so much better than the packaged stuff. And of course I'm adding a very healthy amount to our ground beef mix. Also throughout the entire pie crust process, they don't chill it at all. 
They don't mention keeping the butter cold, and I'm really gonna try to do that. As we've learned over the years, you want that butter borderline ice cold in a pie crust to get all those flaky layers. Once the dough comes together in the food processor, I stuck it back in the fridge for another 30 to 45 minutes, and then rolled it out and pre-baked it exactly as Tasty did in their original video. Some other changes to note is the cheese blend that I'm creating to sprinkle across the top of this. It's gonna be Cotija cheese, some Monterey Jack. I did slide a little bit of that leftover shredded up cheddar from the last one in there. And then plenty of chopped up cilantro is gonna be dumped all over this thing because I can't help myself and I have no sympathy for those who think it tastes like soap. Before I forget too, I cannot believe the fact that the Tasty channel is literally dead. Like, the thing has 20-something million subscribers and all their top talent, from Rie to Alex to Andrew and others, they've all left, they've all created their own channels, they're all thriving. And I don't know if the executives just gave up on it or what, but uh, if you're looking for somebody to take it off your hands, BuzzFeed, I'm here. Wouldn't that be full circle? But to finish this one, as I said, it gets a healthy amount of the lettuce, the salsa, cheeses, sour cream. And I don't know about you guys, but just like the last one, this thing is a very welcomed sight. These are all bringing me back so much, man. Look at this damn thing. I could freaking cry. Mmm. This thing is still so damn good. First of all, what a stroke of genius it is to put cheese in a pie crust, unless they stole that from somewhere. It's like a giant homemade cheese it uh, It's the perfect giant cheesy crispiness you need with all this fatty stuff. The homemade taco seasoning makes a difference too. I've been saying this for years, but if you have all the stuff, it's like five or six ingredients, I highly recommend you try that. And obviously everything else is great too. All the toppings, I love cheese and lettuce. I do kind of wish I thought of putting um, pickled jalapenos on there. Everything about this is great. I highly recommend, still, 10 out of 10. I'm procrastinating and stalling because I do not want to do the last one because it has caused me years of torment, but here goes nothing. And lastly today for dessert is the first ever video or recipe I tested that legitimately gave me nightmares. I dreaded this thing. I've made three different videos on it and call this number four, I guess. It is the magic chocolate ball. And for our first attempt, we're gonna be using these chocolate wafer meltables. Over the countless times that I've attempted this damn thing, these fake chocolate meltable things have proven to be the easiest way. I understand they're not real chocolate. It's primarily sugar, oil, some other stuff, but they're pretty much made for stuff like this. So if it's your first time or you're scared of chocolate, I would recommend using them. Who cares? And because the second part of this recipe is whatever kind of dessert you choose to put inside the ball and have that grand reveal, we're gonna have to whip something up and what could possibly go inside there? I grabbed some sugar and cocoa powder, butter and flour, some salt, dark chocolate, two eggs, and some vanilla paste. Come on guys, you know I couldn't make a video like this and not somehow find a way to include Tasty's fudgy brownies. Still, to this day, almost eight years later, the recipe I tell people is the best across the board from ease to deliciousness to access of the ingredients you need. It is so damn good. I've made them dozens of times, as you already know, both in these videos and in real life. So that's what's going inside our magical chocolate balls today, and I feel like that's only right. I do want to say too, I only just realized that BuzzFeed deleted the original Magic Chocolate Ball video, I don't know why. I do have a few clips from it that I was able to pull from some of my old videos, but it was before I really knew how to show you the original video I was recreating, so I guess it's just gonna have to live on in all of our memories and horrific nightmares as well. And I guess years of torment and practice have helped me because once my brownies were looking great and chopped up, I was able to pull the ball right out of this mold. Where was this years ago? Just like they did in the original, I used a hot plate to kind of melt a hole in the bottom of this and covered up our brownies. Now obviously, to complete the dish, you need a hot liquid to melt that chocolate ball away and reveal whatever is inside. And I had all the intention in the world of making a white chocolate ganache, but when I found these Funfetti chips randomly in my cabinet, I said, why not? They're basically white chocolate with little Funfetti colors in them. I don't know what they're made of, but I thought they looked cool. So imagine my surprise when I went to pour it over the ball and it looked like the most foul concoction I have ever created. Oh my god. 
It did still work pretty successfully um, for the goal, but the liquid itself just looked a little questionable. Either way, the job is complete. Our dessert has been revealed. So let's give our third and final OG recipe a taste. That was very nearly a catastrophic misstep at the end there, but we arrived. I think it worked. Why do I still have a glove on? This part of the video has always been pointless because we already know how it's gonna taste. Um, it's just more for the show, but it's gonna taste godly, so why not? This shit looks so bizarre. It's such a weird texture, um, but it tastes pretty good. As far as the brownies, we all know what I'm gonna say. I still don't really eat a ton of sweets. I'm always a salty over a sweet guy, but I would eat these every single day if they presented themselves. If you still haven't given them a shot, what are you doing in life? Um, as for the chocolate ball, I don't recommend anyone really do that, honestly. Just buy it from a restaurant if you see it available anywhere, if they even still sell them. This was a very early 2010 idea. All in all though, such a good day. It's been such a fun time all these years. And if you like videos like this, there's plenty more for me to go back to, so let me know down in the comments what you would like to see next. Follow me on Instagram if you don't already. And other than that, have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you right back here next time. Peace. And my money super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my 18 Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision